we have um, some guests um, today and I wanted to make an introduction and uh, just want to make sure our guests are on the call. Hi, D Direct Energy is present on the call. All right, awesome. All right, thanks for the confirmation. Is it uh, Tony and Rick? Yes, sir. Yep. Awesome. Great. Great. Great to have you guys over. Um, and uh, yeah, I knew the names want to confirm that this is, uh, you guys are all said and, and connected. So uh, I kick it off here and uh, pass it to you guys for your, um, for your presentation. Thanks for spending spend the time today with us and uh, being on this call. The introduction is uh, we have direct energy on the call as, as was uh, announced. Uh, Rick and uh, Tony, please take over and let me know if you need anything, but uh, you can share your screen um, using the uh, panel on the left-hand side. There's a share screen. If you look at one, two, three, four, fifth icon from the top, that would allow you to share your screen and also your, uh, your, your, your microphone is working. So we, I heard it, so everybody should be able to hear you. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, yes, my name is Rick Larkin. I'm uh, on the sales technology team here at Direct Energy and my counterpart with me is uh, Tony Rebar and he is on the commercial retention team here at Direct Energy. And we are uh, unofficially the uh, application owners for the, uh, what we call the small business gas portal. Um, but basically what it, what it is, is it's a means to facilitate gas matrix pricing. Um, as I understand it, your shop is utilizing uh, an API integration version so that you guys have the pricing and the, and the ability um, to, to price and contract right out of your, your CRM right in front of you, which is very nice. So what Tony and I will talk about today is just kind of a, a general um, update on things we've done in the gas matrix space. We won't, we won't talk about what's being, you know, enhancements to the actual portal because you guys aren't using it. Um, so we'll, we'll speak on that real quick. And then um, I know there was an ask for um, some, uh, some market moving updates. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to get a, uh, a SME on that subject matter to, to, to be able to join us on the call. But Tony and I did come across some slides that we'll just kind of share with you guys. And then you guys can at least have it as reference, um, either the reporting or we can, we can share it with you via email after the, after the presentation. So you have it for reference. Um, and then if there's any follow-up questions with respect to market movement, you know, we can, we can handle those via email or you can reach out to um, Jeff, your AE. So just wanted to start off with that. And then I will attempt to share here. Um, so again, just to reiterate, uh, we're going to just talk about some of the general things that we've improvements upon our gas matrix experience and our pricing involved with it. And uh, just kind of go through from there. So this first piece right here, um, the, the journey step, that's more, that's more pertinent to those, the users that are actually using the portal. So we, we're going to, we're going to skip past that. Um, the journey for you guys will be that will be essentially the same in that it'll just be straight through your API integration. Um, we're going to focus on everything else after that. So this next section here about the size. So in, in the past, we, we divvied up our pricing among three bucket sizes with a maximum of up to 10,000 decatherms. What we've done is we've scaled that down to a soft cap of five, 5,000 decatherms annually. Uh, and the reason we've done that is because, you know, we found that we're, we want to limit our exposure to potential enrollment issues downstream because uh, we found that anything, once you start eclipsing that 5,000 decatherm um, cap, you know, uh, cap, then you can start running in the risk of no longer being eligible for choice. So we've, we've put a soft cap in for 5,000. And then what we've also done is reduced it down to one bucket size. And what that means is that we only have one pricing for that entire subset of, 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 of usage. So there's, you don't have to worry about trying to hit a certain usage threshold within there and being able to have access to a different price, whether it goes up or down, it's just one flat solid price for that entire um, usage bucket. And that 5,000 decatherm annually, uh, Tony is at the customer level, account level. Yes. Okay. Um, with that said, we would, you know, we would say that if you have anything that's on the cusp of that, don't hesitate to put it through. It is a soft cap. There's no, there's no validation that's going to stop it if it's slightly over that. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out directly uh, by whatever means to the to uh, Jeff Coppola, the uh, account executive, and he can help facilitate any answers. And Tony and myself are always available as well. Um, but it's just a it's just a recommended five thousand. It's the soft cap we have there. Uh, moving on, uh, in the past, all we had was a twelve and a twenty four month. Uh, for those of you who have maybe have used the pricing in the past, but all we had access to was a twelve and twenty four month term. What we've done now is added a thirty six month option. 
the caveat to that is that the 36 month option will only be available from prompt month. So if you were to log in right now and pull in and generate pricing, you would see that there's only pricing currently uh, or the current prompt month would be, would be March. So from March, you would have access to a 36 month term. Once you would go into the next month, you know, once you would progress into April, um, you would, it would drop back to only having access to 12 and 24. Enrollments. So previously in the past, uh, the way the way business was done is we would, when when future data contracts would start to come on flow, we would send out all of the enrollments that related to all to you know to that to that start month. We would send them all out on the first of the month. Um, and what you know what we found this led to was a poor experience in that we were running into a lot of enro missed enrollment issues. Um, you know, as you guys know, various markets have you know different lead times and things that, that can um, drastically impact the enrollment uh, time sensitivity around that. So what we've done now is Tony and I have worked with our back office enrollment teams and we've instilled a process where um, prior to the upcoming future data start contract, our back office teams are going through and pulling those accounts uh, and then based upon uh, lead time calculation and all the things that play into that, they will send out the enrollments for those accounts um, and significantly in advance to the start to the start month of the contract. So this is to help ensure that we are hitting all of our accounts and enrolling them on flow. And, and we started that process early in 2019. And I would say that we've drastically improved our uh, enrollment accuracy about to about 90% or, or, or higher. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring concerned. Um, so the next piece is, you know, around, around your margin. So typically where we have is there was a cap of around 50 cents per decatherm. Um, you know, what we say is, Work with uh, work with Jeff, and then you guys, whatever whatever your agreed upon rate is in that in that space, the 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 the, the portal will have will have that and allow that. So whenever you have your pricing and you add on your margin, and the portal will just do a quick verification and make sure that it falls within the range. Um, that's a pretty cut and dry thing. So whatever you guys are agreed to, you know agreed to be selling upon is what you'll have access to, and there's and there's no uh, caveats to that, and um, all the pricing that you have would be would be still the wrong price, right? So all the pricing you would have uh, when you pull, if you would pull daily pricing would be the raw price. And then what you do is you would add your margin on top of that. And that would, that would get you to your final price. So this next bucket or this next line item, the uncompetitive choice price. So what we, what we put there is, is part of the undertaking that Tony and I did with this project that we started la again last year. Um, we got a lot of our internal gas operation uh, managers on in a room with um, some commercial pricing analysts, and we basically reviewed the pricing that we have uh, in the system uh, in attempts to make sure that we have the most competitive and up-to-date pricing that, that's out there. And in most markets we do. Um, there were some markets where we found that we maybe need to revisit some things and, 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 and redo that. But the main reason we put that in there is to call out that we are in fact reviewing that pricing at all times. And we do, we do ensure that we have the most accurate and up-to-date pricing in, in, that, in, that, in those perceived regions. Um, and then this last bullet here, limited reporting. So reporting is um, not a bit of a challenge, but uh, unfortunately, you know, those of you who are familiar with our DHQ power, power pricing platform, uh, you'll know that you get a lot of your reporting aspects either emailed to you directly or you can download them directly from the portal. Uh, unfortunately, you know, with gas, we don't have that uh, ease of use yet. Um, we have some technical difficulties that prevent us from emailing it out and some additional difficulties on having it directly in the system. Now, obviously that wouldn't pertain to you guys because you guys aren't utilizing the portal. But what we do have is we have detailed reporting that gets put together uh, weekly and it will be sent to Jeff. And Jeff will then distribute that out to your, to, to your shop. And that reporting will have everything as far as all the deals that have gone on flow, um, any, any commission uh, uh, information would be there, any, any drop information would be there, all the enrollment issues are enrollments would be there as well. But Jeff, in the meantime, Jeff will facilitate that for you guys. We are working on ways of having that readily, more readily available to you as the broker. But uh, until then, you know, Jeff, Jeff will be able to do it. Or um, we have an email distribution that you can always reach out to that, that can help facilitate that. Moving on to the next slide, uh, just because I don't want to bore everyone. I'm going to let Tony jump in here and speak to this slide a little. Thanks, Rick. Um, just some of it might be repetitive of what we covered on the first slide, um, but just going to cover a few other quick items here. So the pricing and the size. So currently what we've improved as well is we used to just do monthly pricing updates. 
but now every Tuesday evening around 5 p.m. Eastern, we update the prices. With that being said, if you would put one in today prior to that, that price is still gonna be held for three days, three business days, so you will have that same price. Your adder will not change whatsoever, but you have to book it in three days. If not, then you will have to create a new contract or go about a different journey type. All the pricing, as Rick mentioned, is available through the broker portal. There are, there's an export button, so unfortunately we cannot automatically send it, but all you have to do is every Wednesday morning, you could just export the prices and they would be available for you. So you would have that whole week from Wednesday until Tuesday evening around 5 p.m. The only way that we would do an ad hoc run is if some kind of crazy market movement happened, but we would definitely send a notification so everybody would know. Um, as mentioned, there's only one bucket, 5,000 decks annually. If, if it exceeds it, just send it over to us so we can approve it. More than likely, if you have a bunch of smaller accounts under it, say there's 20 accounts and they're 1,000 decks each, our pricing manager and um, commercial manager will, will approve it. But we just want to keep that on our radar for forecasting purposes. 12 and 24 months are available. Um, I know that 36 month is a, you know, a nice selling point for some people. And we are also looking, hopefully in the near future, to expand that for other start dates. As Rick mentioned, it's for prom month only. We're hoping to get that out maybe six more months or even the 12 that we can go out. Um, 20 account maximum per deal. We try to keep that the same as the DEHQ for the power side. And also, whenever you submit one through, it's hitting all of our systems to ensure it's not, not this account is not under contract. So you will not um, slam the customer moving from one system to the other. So it's the timing issue, and we just want to keep it consistent with the other ones. If you have more than 20, you want to break them up just to make it easier for yourself. The broker details, you'll be able to configure the margin for each deal. If your agreement allows up to a dollar, we will make that change. However, it would be 50 cents. Um, you will be paid on flow. I know that upfront has been a push out there, but at the moment we only pay on flow of the contract. And a huge selling point that we like to say all the time is there's no credit check or invoice required. As long as you have the information to submit this in, you can at least generate a contract or send the um, contract to the customer. The states are offered there. I'm not gonna go over all of them but there's all the states we can send you that with the utilities we do serve. Um, 95, 98% of them are UCB. Um, there's a few utilities that would be dual build. And also, as Rick mentioned, I think it goes off of the size at times. If it, if it exceeds a choice at times, it has to be a dual, but a majority of these, if not all, are gonna be UCB with a few exceptions. We ask CNI rate classes only. I know that there could be some residential in there, Right now, this platform is only commercial. If you do have residential, we can get you in contact with that. Um, we can send the contact over to you. But right now, we ask for CNI rate classes only. One thing to also note is there's one price for each rate class. So it's a blended cog of all the rate classes. So some of them will benefit you, others may not. So whenever you look at the prices, keep that in mind. My class, another one. Um, the post post sales information, once you sign up, once you would send out a confirmation to a customer, you are CC'd on that transaction. Along with, once they do confirm the deal, you are CC'd on it. So that's a way that you could tell what's happening with your um, contracts that you're sending out. There's also a report that's generated every Monday that Jeff will have to send over to you. We can't automate it because of a firewall, but we're looking to do something different there. Um, as far as any other communications, your transaction log will house all of your records up to 30 days, except for whenever they close a deal. Whenever you close a deal, it's only gonna be on your transaction log for five days, just to remove it so it doesn't create more space and information you don't need on there. One last thing to note, the ETF, it ranges from $50 to $200 per service location. So that's another nice thing is depending on the utility, it will be a flat fee charge. And if you have 10 accounts and two drop, you're only gonna be charged on those two. The other eight will still remain on flow. So we like to use that as another nice um, advantage of using this odd uh, portal. That's all I have on this section. So, well, again, I, I apologize. We don't have the, we don't have somebody that can speak eloquently or even fluently on with respect to gas uh, and the market movements in those areas. But um, Jeff, did 
grab this real quick, wanted us to share it with you. So just at a high level from this, from this PDF, you can see um, the NYMEX calendar strip, the future NYMEX calendar strip is, is pricing, uh, is trending down. So we wanted to capture that and illustrate that. And then also down here with respect to the um, gas market, it's, just, it's, it, it's remaining historically low. Uh, is are the two high level bullet points and you know I know you guys are recording this so if you have it captured here that's great but if you want us to um, send you this PDF to have these two pictures we can absolutely do it for all for, for your for your information and then like I said if you have any specific questions with respect to the market movement or anything that's on these two PDFs just facilitate the questions through to us or to Jeff and then we can get we can get you more in-depth ans answers on on that aspect but um that's all we have from a presentation aspect Awesome, awesome presentation. Thanks guys for, first of all, introducing that uh, new um, gas matrix that uh, direct energy was missing, a uh, matrix in gas um, um, commodity. And, and recently, you know, I know they do a lot of work that uh, we put together to get this product up and running, the API to be integrated. And it uh, seems like a great coverage uh, and good start. Um, my, my, my question is, um, what what are the plans for moving forward and are you guys planning to add new markets and how do you envision expanding your gas offering and what is the areas of um i would say improvement regarding rates being competitive or not uh currently is there any any uh sort of a overview that you can give us regarding the future of this product all good questions. So what we can talk about from, again, this is high level. Um, we realized, and you kind of, you kind of touched on it. We, we realized that we were lacking, uh, to have a good, strong presence in the gas matrix segment. Um, you know, we kind of had something out there. It worked for a little bit. Uh, and then I think what happened is, you know, it kind of, the, the business lost focus of it. It lost the attention it needed to, to, to grow and expand with, with, with the market. And, it, you know, it kind of slowly became, I don't want to say obsolete, but, it was no longer competitive. So uh, Tony and I and, and, and sales leadership, you know, realized that there's, there's some value to be had there. So that's why the project started last year. Um, with that said, the, the, the general overtone of the project, the project was let's start getting some traction on, what, on, on, on sales that we have with the stuff that we've added. And once we can show, you know, sales leadership and the powers to be that the little bit that we've added has, has, you know, has, can, can translate into some some increased dollar value then we can in turn get additional dollar value to expand upon what we have in there so um there i can tell you there there is a there is a con concerted effort amongst our sales team this year it's one of their sales goals to push and drive sales through through gas matrix and through and through the portal uh whether that's you know directly logging into the portal or via api by any means it's all the same um so sales leadership is on board in helping us get that traction that I mentioned. Um, the, the other thing is that I will tell you that is that my, the, a gas matrix council has now spun up uh, and that basically is a, a, a working organic session of, of different people from the business to kind of talk about uh, where we're at with it and what the future needs are. And the reason that's significant, the reason I mentioned that is because it never existed before at all. Um, we've had a power matrix council for the last uh, two and a half to three years, and we've obviously made a lot of changes there. And as we, you know, as we try to improve upon that, but there was nothing for gas, and now there is. So the first gas matrix council is actually meeting later this month. Um, I'm a part of that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of visibility into the platform. There's a lot of visibility into the potential that's there. But to answer your question specifically, in order to start branching out and get some new market entry and to and to start adding some of the things that Tony and I said we wanted to add, we need to show some return on investment from the original product. So we just need to see, um, we need to see, we need things to keep trending in the right direction. Last year, sales, the sales that went up from the beginning of the year to the middle of the year before we had anything in place, and then from the middle of the year to the end of the year when Tony and I, a lot of our enhancements went live, um, it almost doubled what was done in the early part of the year. So, so the, the, on paper, it's already there that things are working. Now that we have a full year to, to work with with this, I think we have a lot of chance to um, hit those benchmarks that we've set. And then once we start doing that, then we can really start talking about getting some of those new things added in. Um, I would say, by all means, though, um, as you guys start using the pricing and start putting th things through it, uh, if you see things, <laughs> excuse me, if you see things that um, that you think would add a competitive edge or you, that you know it's it's a common thing that's that maybe 
missing that's hindering a deal, please relay, relay those th that to Jeff and Jeff will tell us because, you know, Tony and I can make guesses, but a lot of the stuff we do is based on input from you guys. So uh, by all means, as you start using this and see, see some areas of improvement or some suggestions, just vet those through Jeff and they'll make our way to us and we can get them on the, the potential list of enhancements. Yeah, one, one, of, one of the, uh, I think, main reasons we actually had this conversation regarding the gas matrix because of the specific nature of it. And uh, that being fu fu fully automated, integrated uh, in a true sense with API, I think, I think we, we really uh, think that um, uh, the, the, this, this process is just uh, less subject to Human, human errors and, and failures when it goes to submission, confirming the deal, putting it in flow. You know, we, you know obviously when, when things are semi-automated on, on our end, most of the time we're fully automated, but when it goes to the supplier end, there's another story. A lot of deals can sometimes be hindered or, or, or delayed. But I think with this product, the, the major dif differentiating factor is that it's only actually commercial gas offer matrix offer that we have that is API enabled, meaning that uh, it, it's precise. And um, you're hoping that it becomes competitive and uh, more competitive as we move forward. And I would love to actually get some feedback from uh, our users and uh, our brokers to see where they see uh, it fit, uh, fit into their business and uh, where they find it competitive or not competitive um, and surpass that feedback to you guys and direct energy hey. to um i wanted to ask also one more question from direct energy and um and that's regarding these uh these buckets so you mentioned the buckets for the natural gas the min min min, min max usage that's acceptable to sign a contract has it increased you said or it, did you guys decrease it uh is the is the current amount 100,000 term or 50,000 term or 5,000 decatur. It is it is 50,000 therms or 5,000 dex, however you want to look at it. Um, in the past, we used to have three that it allowed to go up to 10,000 dex, but we figured, you know, if you're a larger customer, the better price. But we just scrapped that. We wanted to get as competitive as we could and put that price for everything. So whether you have a 50 deck customer or 4,000 debt customer, you're going to get the same rate. And we're hoping that, you know, that could drive some business our way as well and make it more competitive. So more competitive for a smaller account, obviously, because they're enjoying the benefit of being in the same bucket as the larger size accounts. Uh, exactly. And, and also ease of transaction from the broker and customer side, right? We wanted to just make this as simple as we can to, you know, make it a five, 10 minute process for an account instead of, you know, maybe making it longer than what it should be. Got it. And, and, and uh, currently what's, what's the type of uh, customer profile that you guys are capturing with matrix overall looking at direct energy portfolio? Is it more, uh, do you have an uh, average uh, usage that you're more successful gathering? Is there a specific state that you have been more successful? I know that this is initial launch and very new program, and congratulations on that. But uh, is there any data yet yet out uh, that you can share regarding the sweet spot of size and states and utilities that you're successful with? We don't we don't really have a breakdown of that per se. Um, just looking at some of the numbers because Rick and I have been more of we're looking at transactions to see what's coming in. We've noticed we've seen quite a few come in from the New York region. Um, at times, Ohio and PA, depending on that time of the, like what time of the year it is as well for the market. But some Ohio, PA, definitely New York. Um, do you see any others, Rick, that you could? Despite the pricing, they all they all said in all various markets, and they all said it looked pretty competitive. Um, so I would say there's I, I would say there's there's advantage uh, you know everywhere as long as you know you're willing to use it. Is and, and, and I don't know, I think I asked, is, is there a next state that you guys are planning to expand to? Not that we're aware. And I mean, Rick alluded to it earlier is, you know, we want to make sure the success is here. But also, if there are any states slash utilities we're missing, please send them over to Jeff, your account executive, 
because we can only send that for review. So basically, we would send it to our gas matrix council and they would review it and say, what is the worth, not just from broker X or whoever, they would look at it as a customer base to say, is it a viable utility for us to go into? So it'd be a whole new market entry because we share, we have a different LEN than the custom price you receive. So we don't have the same utilities in most cases. So we might have to expand on some of them to get them into our platform. Sure thing. Uh, and I have one comment before actually we call it the, uh, uh, a, a conference call and uh, end it. Um, well, I know that uh, we have some difficulties in Illinois and Pennsylvania currently, and I was just checking with our team. Those two states uh, are still missing um, rate updates. So if you could just take that uh, feedback and let us know if there's a fix or uh, plan to re-add those plans and those, uh, those gas offers, that would be much appreciated. But Illinois and Pennsylvania currently are not uh, displaying rates or, or showing rates. And uh, it seems like the API is missing those as of today. Thank you. So with respect to Illinois, um, you know, I'm sure everyone on the call knows, it's probably, probably better than 29, but everyone was aware of uh, the reg changes that went into effect for small business Jan 1 um, and, 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 and some of the commercial requirements that were associated with that. So in, in order to be in compliance with that, we had to make changes to uh, one of our contractual documents that gets generated directly out of the portal. Uh, what we found, um, what we found recently was that the the the, the, the state high level, the, the new items we were supposed to capture were not being captured correctly. So in order to make sure we we stayed in compliance and didn't do something, we had a full pricing off uh, the platform for Illinois currently while we fix that. Um, Tony and I have been pretty much working around the clock with our IT partners for the last week. Uh, we we can we can days to 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 get that where it needs to be. We we are hopeful that by um, by Friday of this week we will have that resolved, and by Monday of next week you you will see the pricing back in there. Got it. So confirm that uh, we have issues with Illinois and Pennsylvania, and you guys are working on it, right? Yeah. So I um, P Pennsylvania actually should not have any issues that we're aware of are you so are you are you not seeing pricing for all pa or a certain utility pa uh there's no pa rates currently okay so what the, all right so um, um what that may be is that uh you guys for whatever reason may not have the appropriate utilities mapped to you for pa and that that could be a quick check that tony and i can do and actually call that after you got this phone if you could, yeah so, if you could confirm that uh, i'd like to uh, yeah, get that. yeah absolutely absolutely Oh, oh, today uh, we had a guest speaker, uh, Direct Energy was kind enough to join the call. The reason for that was to discuss a new matrix that we have rolled out. Uh, it's a complete new, new, new process, it's API driven, and because it's a brand new product, we, we wanted to go over that uh, with folks that are on top of this product, they're in charge of promoting it, and we talked about gas matrix particularly from direct energy and what their expectations regarding expanding it, their competitiveness. To, we looked at some gas trends and uh, such and such. It was a good uh, conversation uh, regarding the supplier's point of view uh, of the market and their new offering, which is a gas matrix. So we'll keep an eye. There's a gas matrix in uh, eight states uh, from direct energy and uh, we're offering it. Uh, so it's a very new product. All right, guys. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for uh, thanks for your time, and uh, we look forward to uh, a call next week, at the same time. And uh, hopefully, we have you guys over again and uh, have a good conversation. Uh, thank you um, both uh, Tony and uh, Rick for joining and having uh, a presentation ready for us, going over this uh, this topic of gas and uh, your matrix. And I appreciate the time again, and we will be in touch. Have a great Our pleasure. Rest of Our pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Talk soon. Bye-bye.